As a rail enthusiast, it probably comes to no surprise that I've been to quite a few railway stations around the country. Upton, Heswall, Glazebrook, Brick, Warrington West, St. Neots. And around a year ago, I decided to commit to visiting every single station in the whole of Britain. All 2,584 of them. Now, whilst I'm still somewhat far from this goal, I am about to reach a rather significant milestone, and that's my 1,000th station. And I decided to give that title to a station that has quite a lot of significance to me. Welcome on board this great northern service to Welling Garden City, specifically on the approach to New Barnet Station. No, we're not getting off quite yet. I'm actually at 998 stations at the moment, so we're actually going to first go to Hadley Wood, and we'll be back here later. Hadley Wood. Oyster and contact paint. Alright. Station 999. Hadley Wood. So for those of you who are unaware, I was born in Barnet in North London. Funnily enough, where Hadley Wood Station lies. And for reasons I will explain later, I believe being here helped shape my interest in railways. But to help me tell the story a little bit better, we need to go on a little bit of a walk. Ah, Sir Nigel Gresley lived here for a few years. Didn't know that. I always love coming back here and visiting once in a while. There's just something about, like, North London that just feels very, like, cosy and homely to me, just subconsciously. It's, it's just a nice place. I feel happy here. So through this forest, we will be arriving at the location of some of my life's earliest memories. So whilst this here may just seem like a generic bridge over a railway line, it's actually one of the places that, when I was about one or two years old, my dad would sometimes take me here and just sit me in my pram to look at some trains on the railway. Now some old viewers of the channel may be aware that this is not my first time actually at this bridge. I went here in a video that was around 18 months ago, where I gave a pretty similar story to this. But as I'm told, basically, little baby me just really enjoyed coming here. And I just really enjoyed sitting here watching the trains go by. Granted, you know, I don't really remember it that well, but I do have one memory of being just in a pram coming here and seeing, I think, one of the warning signs or something that was, you know, behind me on the bridge here. But I do remember being told by my dad about just how, for some reason, it would just keep me entertained for a good time. Kind of hilariously, that might be the sort of only time I was ever really properly a trained spotter, where, you know, just sitting and watching them for fun, <laughs> rather than actually riding them. But this isn't the only thing around here I'm here to see. We'll keep walking. Here we are. A field. And what significance does this place have, you ask? Well... So I say I lived in Barnet when I was younger, and funnily enough, I lived there, just over there, in that neighbourhood of flats. I forget exactly which flat it was, so I can't exactly say, but it was in that sort of general neighbourhood area. And obviously we had this field here, right next to it, which had, well, not right now because there's quite a lot of leaves in the way, but 
when the leaves were less so in times like winter, you could see the railway line quite clearly and visibly. So I have an, albeit rather vague, because I was a toddler, memory of being stood in the grounds for that building over there. I still, I don't really know what that building even is still, but I remember being stood there and I just have a very sort of vague memory of it being sort of kind of sunny and seeing a train over there, just passing by. Presumably it was winter time because, you know, you can't really see anything right now because of all the leaves on the trees. That or more trees have grown since then, I have no idea. But when I think about it more and more, most of my memories of the time living here were rail related. Or, you know, just seeing trains or going places with trains. And I can't help but think that it is the reason, subtly, subconsciously, that made me like trains to this day. A story that my Nana likes to tell me a lot is whenever I was sat in the flat, and a train would be going by. I'd always say, a twain, a twain. That one's going to Yondon, that one's going to Yorkshire. Apparently, anyway. I mean, I suppose I was partially correct. I mean, that way is towards London and that way is, in some cases, towards Yorkshire. Some of them do. <laughs> I mean, I was too. C can you really blame me? Anyway, I think it is time we head back to Hadley Wood because the train I need to get out of there is coming up rather soon. So I like to believe that sort of living here with that view of the trains and me being so like happy and enthusiastic to see them, I like to think it's sort of subconsciously imprinted in my mind to just like them because throughout, pretty much throughout my childhood, I just, you know, I wasn't like proper rail enthusiast level like I am today, but I always just had a pretty big affinity for trains and I'd always enjoy going to stations. Like I'd often with my parents go to Liverpool or Manchester for like a day in the weekend and it wasn't even going to Liverpool or Manchester. You know, this was after we moved to Warrington. It wasn't even going to the cities that I liked the most. It was the train journey to the place that I enjoyed. And we also had some family friends that we'd often visit a couple of which lived near stations and I, you know, I would always ask, can we go to the station for a bit and just sit there? The, the signs were all there. And so my interest levels kind of stayed this way for most of my life up to this point. But this all changed on my 18th birthday when a group of friends of mine at the time gifted me a model railway train set. This was kind of a product of me sort of jokingly saying how I'd wanted a train set all my life because I said it jokingly to them at the time because I was too ashamed to admit it because, you know, at the time I didn't really know any other train nerd people. But being gifted this set sort of gave me enough of a reminder that, you know what, now I'm old enough and have some money to be able to do it, why don't I give it a try and go out by myself to go and ride some trains for fun. And so, about a couple of months later, just for fun, I went out for the day to go and ride on Mersey Rail because it was, you know, uh, just nice, kind of nostalgic for me, railway line that was fairly near where I lived in Warrington. And I went out for the day and I spent a total of four hours straight riding trains, completely unprecedented for me at the time. And I was like, Oh my God, this is my life's passion. And not long after, I pretty much ended up being all in with the rail enthusiasm to the sort of levels you see me doing it now today. And honestly, I do have to say, I think going fully into this passion and interest I had was one of the greatest things I could have possibly done in my life so far. I didn't think that I would meet near as many like-minded individuals as I have. The train enthusiasm niche was surprisingly larger than I expected. And it's also for a similar reason as to why I really enjoy making the YouTube videos. 
because it gives me sort of a feeling of passion and purpose. That, like, if it wasn't for me enjoying going out on trains and whatnot, I genuinely don't know what I'd be doing with my life right now. I feel like my life would be so boring and dull. I just cannot really put into words just how big of a part of my life all of this is now with rail travel and everything. It's wonderful. And I'm very happy that my life is like this at the moment. I've been so thankful for all of the people I've been able to meet so far on my travels on the railways. You've all been so amazing and wonderful. And also for the people who've wanted to meet me, because for some reason me putting videos on the internet makes people want to meet me for some reason. You're all amazing and just thank you so much for this. Anyway, on that note, shall we head to my 1000th station to visit on the UK National Rail Network? I think so. Please mind the gap. Every single Mersey Rail station in a single day. So we made it to Hanforth. This is pretty cool. So this is Barking Riverside. Swinderby. Nice. They've, they've even got a manually operated level crossing. I have a net! Whoa! It is just incredible how many people like the HSTs. Heathen! <laughs> and Cameron <laughs> Bridge. <laughs> we will shortly be arriving at New Barnet. Big moment coming up. Station 1000. And here we are, station number 1000, where it all began at New Barnet Station, the local station to our old flat. That's crazy, I've been to a thousand stations now, like what? My God. I mean, I've still got uh, 1,584 more to go, but it's still, more than most people would do. So, yeah. I'm glad I made this station, Station 1000. A station very, just, you know, important to me. And was a big factor in my rail enthusiasm. I'm not going to stop being a rail enthusiast anytime soon. I love it too much. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. And of course, a huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members listed on screen now, and a warm welcome to my new standard premium member, Laser Jet. Thank you all for supporting the channel.